now let us discuss the first profile or you can say first conjugate profile that is the involute profile right we can say that conjugate profile means the profile which will satisfy the law of gearing at each and every point of contact so the conjugate profile is of two types one is the involute another one is the cycloidal profile so first of all let us discuss about the involute profile this is the most important profile which we have to discuss so involute profile will be generated or you can say that the involute profile of the gear is the locus of a point on a line which rolls on a circle right if a line is in pure rolling motion along a fixed circle then the locus of a point on that line will give you the involute profile right suppose this is a circle which is fixed let us say this is the center of rotation of this uh, or the center of this circle now this circle is known as base circle first of all let us see that this circle is known as base circle right now suppose we have this line right i am just i already draw the lines so let us say this is the first position of line right after that so let us say this is the second position of the line after that let us say this is the third position of the line now if this line is under pure rolling motion on this circle this line is under pure rolling motion and suppose if i choose this end point of this line as a point so the locus of this point the locus of this point on this line will give you the involute profile the locus of this line will give you the involute profile now this is your fourth one this is the third one third position and let us say this is the fourth position here so if i join all the if i join this point right at each and every location if i join this point like this if i join this point this profile is your involute profile this is known as involute of a circle involute of a circle so this profile is the involute profile and if two involute profile gears will come in contact with each other so at each and every point on this profile the law of gearing is satisfied and this circle over which this line is under pure rolling motion is known as base circle the important point about uh, regarding your involute profile is the important point which you have to remember is that the line of action or the line of action at which your contact points will lie the line of action is tangent to the base circle this is important in the involute profile the line of action is tangent to the base circle and this line of action is also a common normal to the point of contact we already see that line of action is the your common normal at the point of contact and this common normal will pass through a fixed point that is known as your pitch point and this line of action is the tangent to this base circle right this you have to remember in the case of involute profile the line of action is the tangent to the base circle now this involute profile this involute profile can be easily analyzed with the help of belt and pulley drive suppose this these two are the gears or these two are the pulleys and on which we have a belt suppose this is a one section of the belt cross and cross belt and pulley drive right this is cross belt and pulley drive like this right suppose this pulley is having radius r1 and angular velocity of this pulley is omega1 and if this is rotating so we can say that suppose this pulley is of having radius r2 and angular velocity omega2 and if there is no slipping between the belt and rope or belt and pulley if there is no slipping at between this pulley and this belt then we can say that your r1 omega1 will be equal to r2 omega2 right r1 omega1 will be equal to r2 omega2 now 
Now suppose if I take one point on this line that let us say one point on this belt let us say this point Q and suppose this point where this line will touch this pulley is A and this point is B. Suppose I am taking one point on this belt that is Q. So we can say that as this as this pulley is rotating as this pulley is rotating this belt is moving like this this belt is moving like this so we can say that this point Q will always lie on this line right this point Q will always lie on this line AB so point Q will always lie on AB when this pulley is rotating and now you can you can visualize that suppose these two are the gears these two are the gears and when they will rotate when they will come in contact with each other and they start rotating so this line is the common tangent to this two pulleys so these are the this line is the common tangent suppose this is the base circle of gear 1 this is the base circle of gear 2 so this line is the common tangent to this both of the base circle right so this is the line of action for us this is the line of action so if this is the line of action we can say that the point of contact will lie on this line of action so this point of contact will lie on this line of action and this line of action is the common tangent to both the base circle right this is written here that this line of action at which this point of contact suppose this q is the point of contact right so this point of contact is on the line of action and this line of action is tangent to the base circle this is common tangent to this base circle and also it is a common normal at the point of contact right it is also as the common normal at the point of contact now suppose if i take a point q on this line right this q is at this position this q is not point of contact right suppose i take a point q and if i fix this pulley suppose if i fix this pulley suppose i fix this pulley one and i start winding this belt if i start winding this belt like in this direction without slipping and i keep this belt tight always and i start winding up this point this belt on this pulley then the curve generated by this point q the when this when you wind this then the point q will be moving in a curve so that curve which you will get as a locus of this point Q when you fix this pulley and start winding this belt then the curve generated by this point Q is known as involute profile it is known as involute profile so if if I draw this profile for let us say if, if I draw the profile or the curve of this point Q then for the gear one it will be like this suppose it will be like this so this is the this this is the involute profile of this gear and suppose if i wind this bq suppose if i wind this bq on this pulley 2 suppose if i fix fix this pulley 2 and i start winding up in this direction keep the belt always tight so we can say that the locus of this point q suppose this is the locus of this point q generally so this is the involute profile of this gear right this is the profile or involute profile for profile for this pulley 2 this is the involute profile for this pulley 2 and this is the involute profile for pulley 1 this is involute profile for pulley 1 right this is the way you can draw the involute profiles the important point which you have to remember is that the line of action is the common tangent to the base circle and this line of action is also the common tangent or common normal at the point of contact and this line of action will always pass through a fixed point that is the pitch point on the line joining the center of rotation this all we know so this is the your involute profile and if we talk about what are the advantages of involute profile right why we are using this involute profile so if we talk about the advantages of advantages of involute profile involute profile 
Now let us see what are the various advantages of this involute profile. The first one is, the first advantage of this involute profile is, this will maintain the law of gearing. This is the most important that at each and every point of contact, this involute profile is maintain the law of gearing. Right. This will always maintain the law of gearing that is at each and every point of contact it will give you the constant angular velocity ratio. Now the second advantage is that in the involute profile your operating pressure angle is always constant. This is the major advantage of this involute profile that the operating pressure angle. What is the pressure angle? The angle between common normal and common the angle between the normal and tangent so the operating pressure angle is constant pressure angle is constant right what is the pressure angle the angle between the common normal and common tangent it is the pressure angle so it will be constant in the involute profile we will see how this will be constant third third important advantage is that it will maintain the conjugate action or you can say this will maintain this profile will maintain the law of gearing the most important advantage is that it will maintain the law of gearing even if even if the center distance will change even if the center distance of two gears will change right this is not satisfied by the con your cycloidal profile right we say that if we have these two shaft we, we have one gear on this shaft another gear on this shaft but when they are rotating suppose this is the center of this is the distance between the center of rotation so when these gears are rotating because of vibrations these center of this this distance between the center of rotation will keep changing this will keep changing right because some vibrations will be there so we can say that in that case also this involute profile will maintain the law of gearing but in case of cycloidal profile if the center distance will change in case of cycloidal profile then the law of gearing will not be satisfied right so this is the advantage of the involute profile then the next will be the simple thing is it is easy to produce so with the involute profile we have ease of production these are the four advantages of the involute profile that it will maintain the law of gearing at each and every point the operating pressure angle will be constant and it will maintain the law of gearing if the center distance will change and the production of this involute profile is easy as compared to the cycloidal profile now if you can see if you can see from here i just want to add one thing here is that if you can see that the profile which is above the base circle this line is rolling on the base circle right this line is rolling on the base circle so the profile which is above the base circle is the involute profile right in no matter that this line will go inside this base circle this is not the possibility right why i am saying this because suppose suppose you have this base circle suppose you have this base circle right now if let us say you draw a profile of this of a gear let us say if i draw a profile of a gear let us say this is the profile of a gear right suppose if i extend this profile here also inside the base circle this is your base circle base circle so the most important thing which you have to remember is the profile which is above the base circle only this profile is the involute profile only this profile is the involute profile the profile which is below the base circle this profile the profile which is below the base circle this is non involute profile this is non involute profile that means that means most important thing is that means 
if the tith of the mating gear suppose if the tith of the mating gear will be in contact at this point suppose the mating gear will be in contact at this point suppose this is the mating gear gear of your the uh, teeth of mating gear suppose this teeth will be having a contact here but here the contact is this is the involute profile of the gear but this is not the involute profile so at this point your law of gearing is not satisfied at this point your law of gearing is not satisfied just remember so we always want that the maximum maximum the teeth of the mating gear will be having a contact with this teeth up to this level only up to this level only if it goes beyond this then your law of gearing will not satisfy this is the most important thing which i want to show it here so this is all about the involute profile and we can see that how these these things will be possible in the involute profile with the help of a diagram now let us discuss the involute profile diagram suppose in this we this diagram is very important and you have to remember this diagram suppose we have two gears right let us say i am saying suppose this is your driver gear means this gear is having some input and let us say this is the driven gear this is the driven gear right this is the center of rotation of this driven gear that is o2 and the center of rotation of this <coughs> gear on driver is this o1 this is the base circle of driver and this is the pitch circle of driver gear right so i can say that this is the base circle of let us say gear 1 and this is the pitch circle of gear 1 this is the pitch circle of this gear 2 and this is the base circle of gear 2 right they both this pitch circle of gear 1 and this circle of gear 2 will <laughs> meet at this point and this is known as pitch point p this is known as pitch point p this is the common tangent this is the common tangent to both base uh, both pitch circle passing through the point p and this is your common normal right this is your common normal or you can say this is your line of action or you can say or this is the common normal common normal right this is the common normal to the pitch circle at this pitch point now this line of action is a common tangent to the base circle we know from the involute profile properties that this line of action will be the common tangent to the base circle so suppose this common normal will touch this base circle at this point m and this will touch the base circle 2 at this point n suppose suppose we can say let us say that small r is the radius of this pitch circle 1 small r is the radius of pitch circle 1 and let us say capital r is the radius of this pitch circle of gear 2 radius of pitch circle of gear 2 capital r and this is the line joining the center of rotation right now we know that this angle is phi this angle is pressure angle phi so if this angle is phi then obviously you can say that that this line is perpendicular to this line and this line is perpendicular to this line so this angle will also be equal to phi right this angle will also be equal to phi right now 
This distance O1 P is equal to R small r o1 p is equal to small r and this distance o2 p will be equal to capital r suppose the radius of the base circle of this gear one is suppose the radius of base circle of this gear one is r b1 R B1 means the radius of the base circle of gear 1. This is R B1 is the radius of this base circle O1 M is the radius. Suppose here the radius is R B2. Right? R B2. This angle is 90 degree. Similarly, this angle is also 90 degree. So from this diagram you can easily say that from this diagram we can say that the base circle radius of gear 1 the base circle radius of gear 1 rb1 rb1 will be equal to r1 cos phi and rb2 will be equal to capital r cos phi we know this right we can easily calculate that this will be equal to capital r cos phi and this will be equal to small r cos phi right now now just pay attention if we neglect the friction effect if we neglect the friction effect when these two gears will be in contact with each other they have there is existing a solid friction but if i neglect the friction effect why we are neglecting the friction effect because if friction is there then then these gears when they are moving with respect to each other or they are rotating with respect to each other they have to overcome this friction and to overcome this friction some of the power or some of the torque will lost so if we neglect the friction suppose we can say that if we neglect the friction between the gears if we neglect the friction let us say suppose along this common normal let us say that along this common normal this is the driver gear and this is the driven gear so this has some power and power has to transfer from this shaft to this shaft so this gear will exert a force on this gear 2 this driver gear will exert a force on this driver 2 along this common normal and let us say the force exerted in this direction by the your gear 1 or the driver gear the force will be exerted on the driven gear in this direction let us say that this force will be f let us say this force is f right now if we neglect the friction then we can say that the driving effort is along the common normal you know that if we neglect the friction then we can say that the driving effort or the force you can say that the driving effort will be along line of action will be along the line of action line of action this driving effort will be along the line of action or you can say common normal and let us say this driving effort is f let us say this driving effort is f then we can say that the torque acting on the gear 2 this gear 2 will rotate suppose this is rotating with a angular velocity sub let us say omega 1 in the anti clockwise direction so let us say this will be rotating in the clockwise direction with an angular velocity omega 2 now this gear has to rotate so for the rotation we need torque so because of this force this force will exert a torque on this gear 2 so we can say that the torque exerted torque exerted on gear 2 torque exerted on gear 2 let us say this will be equal to t 
so the torque exerted will be force into its base radius right this force into this distance that is the base radius so this will be equal to f into capital r cos phi right we already see that this will be the force acting and this is the force which is responsible for this rotation of this gear 2 right now we can say that this this force is constant this force is constant why constant because this force f is constant this torque is constant because r is constant phi is constant right this torque is constant why because you need a constant angular velocity ratio so the constant angular velocity ratio will be only possible when the torque exerted on this gear 2 will be constant then only you will get a constant angular velocity right or you can say that the angular velocity ratio maintained by this these gears will be constant so this torque must be constant which is acting on this gear 2 so if this torque will be constant that means because the pitch radius of this gear is constant phi is constant that means the force f is constant you can say that this force f is constant so we can say that if force f is constant it means this magnitude of this force and the direction of this force will remain same that means that the direction and magnitude of this force will remain constant so this force will be acting in a constant direction of a constant magnitude so the because a force is a vector so if it is constant so both direction and magnitude will be constant right that means that means the bearing reactions the bearing reactions will be constant so this f has a component along this this axis so this f has a con component along this line this line will here we have some bearing so this bearing reaction will be constant right now now if i can say what is this o1 o2 the distance between this point o1 o2 will be small r plus capital r this o1 o2 will be small r plus capital r this is small r this is capital r right this distance is small r plus capital r now if you can write from here if you can write from here we can say that from this if i divide this then we can say that this is small r not r1 right so we can write that small r upon capital r small r upon capital r will be equal to base radius of first circle divided by base radius of second circle right base radius of first circle divided by base radius of second circle and we know that from the from the basic definition of gearing that it has to maintain the constant angular velocity that is omega 1 by omega 2 must be equal to r2 by r1 you know this omega 1 by omega 2 will be equal to r2 by r1 that then only we can say this is a gear gear has to maintain this constant angular velocity ratio so we can say that this will be equal to this will be equal to omega 2 upon omega 1 omega 2 upon omega 1 so from here you can write that the angular velocity ratio omega 2 upon omega 1 can also be written as rb1 upon rb2 this is important now now see if this center distance will change suppose this center distance will change if the center distance will change so let us say that this o will reach here o1 dash and let us say o2 will reach here o2 dash because of the vibrations this center distance will change so the center distance will change then this small r this pitch circle radius will change this capital r will change but 
बिकॉज दीज गियर्स आर द सेम गियर्स गियर्स आर द सेम नहीं वंस द गियर इज मैन्युफैक्चर्ड वंस द यू मेड ए गियर इट्स बेस सर्कल विल रिमेन फिक्स नो मैटर वट विल बी द सेंटर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दीज टू गियर्स देयर बेस सर्कल विल रिमेन सेम दिस आर एंड स्मॉल आर एंड कैपिटल आर विल चेंज इफ द लेटर से आर डैश इज द न्यू पिच सर्कल रेडियस एंड कैपिटल आर डैश इज द न्यू पिच सर्कल रेडियस ऑफ गियर टू बट इन दैट केस ऑल्सो द बेस सर्कल रेडियस विल रिमेन सेम सो वी कैन से दैट इफ ओ वन एंड ओ टू चेंजेस इफ आई कैन राइट इफ ओ वन ओ टू दिस डिस्टेंस ओ वन ओ टू विल चेंज ओ वन ओ टू विल चेंज देन वी कैन से दैट बोथ स्मॉल आर एंड कैपिटल आर विल चेंज स्मॉल आर एंड कैपिटल आर विल चेंज बिकॉज यू इफ यू इंक्रीज दिस देन योर पिथ सर्कल रेडियस विल ऑल्सो चेंज बट बट योर बेस रेडियस आर बी वन एंड आर बी टू दिस विल नॉट चेंज दिस विल नॉट चेंज दिस विल रिमेन सेम दिस बेस रेडियस विल रिमेन सेम एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस बिकॉज दिस आर बी वन एंड आर बी टू इज सेम सो द रेशो ऑफ आर बी वन अपॉन आर बी टू विल रिमेन सेम सो द ओमेगा टू बाई ओमेगा वन विल मेंटेन कॉन्स्टेंट वेन दिस सेंटर डिस्टेंस विल चेंज देन ऑल्सो यू विल मेंटेन दिस ओमेगा टू बाई ओमेगा वन कॉन्स्टेंट बिकॉज दिस आर बी वन एंड आर बी टू इज नॉट चेंजिंग सो दिस ओमेगा टू बाई ओमेगा वन विल बी कॉन्स्टेंट दैट मीन्स दिस विल नॉट चेंज और यू कैन राइट लाइक दिस ओमेगा टू बाई ओमेगा वन दिस विलॉसिटी रेशियो विल नॉट चेंज दिस विलॉसिटी रेशियो विल नॉट चेंज सो दिस इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ द इनवॉल्यूड प्रोफाइल दैट इफ यू इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज द दिस सेंटर डिस्टेंस then also the constant angular velocity ratio can be maintained by the involute profile this is not possible in case of cycloidal profile that's why involute profile is the best profile to use right but there is some disadvantage associated with the involute profile and the major disadvantage with the involute profile is the interference the possibility of interference and we will discuss that what do we mean by interference first of all let us see here so if this will change then we can say if o1 and o2 will change your pressure angle will change obviously pressure angle will also change pressure angle will not constant right suppose this pith circle will increase so now the your this will change this pressure angle will change so if you change the center distance then pressure angle change pith circle radius change base circle radius will remain constant and angular velocity ratio will be maintained constant so this is the advantage of the involute profile